Hi. Um, my name is Ian Cookson. I'm uh, not an Ilnair. I'm actually the product manager for application continuity, no matter how I spell it or misspell it. Um, this is my first chance to come out in public as the that in that role, and uh, yeah, welcome the chance and talking to uh, a yeah, relatively small audience, but let's talk in elementary terms at least of what about un handling unplanned outages, whether it be with TAF or application continuity. And I uh, want to emphasize here that it is really uh, an evolution of functionality and capabilities uh, we're, we're presenting here and talk about uh, basically a QA on what TAF is and what application continuity is and the differences and the direction we're setting with these. I'm going to talk a bit about, about some of the technical aspects of this, but uh, really just want to position it correctly for everybody. Okay. So this is kind of the agenda we want to go through. I do not want to do a big slideshow. I'm going to use the slides basically as a talking points, um, get some points across, show you how these things work, what the differences are. Um, feel free, though, to further ask questions in chat, and then we'll try and address those as we go along. Um, we are covering a rack. This is on a rack <laughs> platform, obviously. Uh, for failovers and so forth, but we're talking about a different aspect of it. This is from the application availability and uh, aspect to rack and uh, maximum availability architectures. Okay, so let's get started on what we're trying to achieve. I mean, um, is it application availability or what? And realistically, this is just a component of what we consider to be continuous availability where we look at planned and unplanned outages and try to hide them from applications. In other words, hide them from the users. Um, there are lots of ways of doing that and um, efforts have been you know, increasing to, especially in the areas of unplanned outages, to uh, mask that outage from, from the end user. So that, you know, inevitably it'd be very, very nice if users never knew they lost a database or a database instance or a server. That was um, kind of furthering the whole um, concept of rack and high availability. Taking it beyond just making sure a server is always available, let's just go even further and say, well, let's make sure the users don't even notice. This is what we really want to achieve. So, uh, and there's a lot of different aspects of this, of continuous availability that we want to address. It is not absolute availability. There's never going to be a, now, we're not trying to address the um, question of does it ever impact users? Uh, we can't completely insulate users from everything that might happen. But we uh, would anticipate we know what type of things might likely happen, in which case we want to insulate those um, users as much as possible for them. So we look at high availability where we're minimizing downtimes and so forth. And, and trying to do basic maintenance in a rolling fashion. As soon as we start talking rolling, we're talking about impact on users. Because as you take, you know, we're trying to minimize that. Now that's a planned outage or a planned maintenance, more precisely, because we don't want that to be an outage. What I'm trying to talk about today, though, is the unplanned. Okay, and where we're going to remove downtime from a user's perspective. Okay. Take it out of the, take that word outage completely out of the vocabulary if, we, if at all possible. And we want to make sure the in-flight work is preserved because well, we don't have to redo it. We don't have to force the users or the applications just to change to, manage, to, to address this. We'd like to make sure all this happens behind the scenes without really the customers being too negatively impacted. So in other words, unplanned outages should be hidden from applications. Okay. Pretty straightforward. So what is TAF? And this has been around for a long time now. In the early days of RAC, this was introduced to provide what we call transpa transparent application failover. Grandiose name, um, boiled down to fairly simple concept. Um, where it reconnects sessions from a failed instance 
to another instance. Basically, it automatically reconnect a, a, an application session to a um, live instance when the, the primary instance it had been connected to disappeared for whatever reason that might be. In addition, it would resume the, the open SQL statements or select statements. Notice, notice the emphasis on select. DML was not resumed. Okay, so basically it was a rollback for those DML statements, the, the uh, updates, deletes, inserts. That would not. That was beyond the capabilities of this. Okay, from uh, feature. Uh, validates on the client, basically, um, or the mid tier, whichever you want to call it, consider to be the, the application. Um, but that's basically what it is. It's basically, what that means is. Um, we just check locally. If everything seems to be good, we're running again, we, we resubmit and away we go. Uh, it has no idea what it's reconnecting to uh, beyond this connect string. Okay, this is an important point, we'll come to that. Now, how is this configured? And remember, this is, we're talking about the evolution. These are the early days of Rack when TAP was first introduced. And these are the types of configurations you would have where you would look for a connect string. Um, notice that you actually have server names in there. And now obviously I've abbreviated this, and <laughs> made it simple. Um, but we've turned load balancing on and we've turned failover on, okay? And the failover mode, you can see is gonna be based on, well, the type is always gonna be select. Well, it kind of makes sense. And we'd always use basic. We're always gonna connect in a basic and failover in a basic method. There are other options, and if you really want, want to look at those, uh, I strongly suggest, you know, go and read the documentation about this. Um, you gotta look back quite a long way for all the details. Um, we were writing white papers about this 10 or 12, 15 years ago, and uh, those are still current <laughs> because, you know, um, we moved on a bit. Okay? And obviously you can, you can build this in with retries so you can keep trying to reconnect uh, how many times and how long a delay between in seconds, okay? Again, very straightforward, connect strings. This is in your tnsnames.ora file. Uh, really hasn't progressed from there too much. Except now, you know, as we've added new functionality to rack instances and so forth, rack deployments such as scan and service names, we've had to, we've accommodated those. So in this case, what you're connecting that first connect string is, well, this is a TNS names entry where you're connecting via scan. It picks off a, um, and it, we've told it we want to use this service by the name of MKTG, the marketing one. Um, and it will look for that service name and, and load balance across the, the um, whatever, wherever that, that service is running. Okay. But you need to, conf you know, um, alternately, we've been talking about configuring the connect via the connect string. If you look at back previously on these sessions, these connection strings, we've connect, we've configured TAF for this particular connection to retry 20 times with a 15 second delay between retries. We want a basic method and we only want to look at select statements. Okay. But you can configure that basically on the, on the service level, which is probably going to take precedence. The intent here. Let's do it once, not have to maintain all those differences within the TNS names.org files. For everyone that's connecting to this marketing um, service, then we that will uh, you know we want to have it basic. We're going to do it on select, okay, and we're going to have delays and uh, retries, okay, much the same as we had designated for TNS names entries for the simple, simple connections. So we can set it here, we'll, which will take precedence over what we see externally. We, then we don't have to worry about maintaining the TNS names.or files, okay? which has always been a problem in the past okay, for client-server scenarios. Okay. Very simple, okay? But let's just look at what the, the, the impact was for that, okay? Because basically, before 12C, before we started looking at introducing application continuity, we were left with TAF or nothing. And the best we could hope for was reconnect and replay of the SQL statements that would support select. 
if we had transactions, well, we had to basically applications would have to handle the errors and either users would have to redo all their work or it'd have to be resubmitted one way or another. And uh, while there were facilities for doing some of that, uh, that required a lot of extra work on modifying and maintaining applications to do specific work like that. It was far better to consider, well, can we move some of that requirement uh, away from uh, the client and look at other ways to, to handle the same problem uh, and a bit more fully. In this situation, we can think of um, think of the scenario where you're submitting a uh, you're online and you're looking at <coughs> uh, doing a transaction, and you go through all the rigmarole of picking flights or whatever cars, rentals, and so forth, and all the details you've entered in. And you finally selected what you want, and you say, "Press the button. I'll submit my order." or make my reservation and it doesn't come back or it comes back with a 400 error saying we, uh, you know, internal server error. You have no idea what's happened. You have no idea whether it's actually gone through um, or if someone's just gobbled up your credit card information and, and sold it along the line. You have no concept of finality on this. So you think, well, maybe I have to do it again so on and so forth. There are all sorts of stories of people doing uh, submitting taxes many times over <laughs> because they got errors like this. And I'm not saying it was an Oracle scenario, but if you keep getting these errors and you re you're uncertain what the scenario is, you're kind of lost. It's not very helpful. Um, and so uh, we have to try and address that. And in the, in the 12C time frame, we started doing so. So we introduced application continuity. The intent here was to be able to replay in-flight transactions on recoverable errors. In other words, errors that we could understand and manage, okay? Now, some errors we can't uh, or couldn't, certainly in the initial state, okay? The intent was to mask many of those outages and so forth and errors uh, whenever possible. Ultimately, we want to improve that end user experience, but realistically, we want to mask the effects of unplanned outages. So that users not only doing selects, but also changes to data, um, commits and transactions could actually continue working and not be so negatively impacted. Okay. So, beyond the obvious, Let's just look at a couple of things about how TAF and application continuity differ. Um, and it's a matter of evolution here because TAF was great in its time, but you know, we, it was never quite what we wanted, what, app, what customers wanted, and what we wanted. But it, it did solve some problems initially, and it was very good in terms of you know, for, for read-only applications or read-heavy applications. It supported an OCI or an ODP net. Uh, select statements only, of course, uh, validate on the client. So it's really just you get what you get back from, from the database and you validate it there and hope for the best. Key difference, key issue here was, was unaware of what state that session was actually in. So as you failed over and it started replaying, it had no idea or the database it had no idea what the database was doing, and, and, and consequently, you never were guaranteed to get exactly the same processing of the SQL statement, okay? Remember, all the SQL statements moved on and so forth, or the, the state of the database has moved on. You may have connected to um, a different instance. Um, if you, the worst case scenario, if you're in a sharded environment, you still, you submit a SQL statement or select statement against one database instance in which certain shards are available. Submit that query and it fails, or the instance fails, you fail over to another instance. So resubmit the query. Well, that instance may be a different shard, in which case your re return set for that SQL statement is gonna be completely different. Um, that's what we mean by unaware state. There's no session state matching between the client and the database. 
Okay. It's a key difference here beyond obviously the transactional element. So in application continuity, while we support a lot more different uh, interfaces, as much because we were focusing very heavily at that point on the mid tier, in which case we were doing pooling and we could use some of the logic in that mid tier to help do this matching of state. Which was absolutely required to make sure that we are doing um, proper handling of transactional elements within the um, within the session. So we validate the mid tier and against the database. So whatever is happening at the client or the mid tier has to match what is visible and reasonable in the database. Okay. Really big difference. So without that state matching up we can't do transactional uh, replays. Okay. Well, in summary again here, uh, this is all the stuff we've covered already. Okay. Taft's got a lot of no's on there. And restores initial session, well, it depends on your application. That's what we mean by understand your app. Your app. Um, Again, uh, it has to know what its limitations are and where we where the session sits. Okay, so there's an assumption that the session is going to be valid no matter to which what, which user uh, database instance we connect and uh, and when and uh, so it's you could say time is not an element here. Well, it really is in time application continuity ensures that time and the progression of time and the data changes over time are taken into account. And so if the data has changed dramatically or has changed between the fail, failure and the re replay, then you've got a problem and you're going to have to find different ways of, of under managing that. Now, there's going to be a number of these things, such as request boundaries and so forth, and mutables and so forth, some of these terms, and I'm not going to really go into it in this session. Um, we would anticipate that in a few months' time, we're going to do another session about application continuity, in which case we're going to dig down a lot more deeper into how application continuity works and some of these key factors, what request boundaries mean and so forth, and how how to implement application continuity in a more concrete way, and what other customers have found. Okay, there's bound to be lots of questions coming up. Where are we going right now? What's going and how it works? Well, basically, remember application continuity is meant to replay in-flight transactions on what we consider to be recoverable errors, okay. ones that do not spend too much time and so forth, and do not break the state. Um, we covered a lot of that already. Obviously, in, in 12.1, we introduced a number of things that basics, the JDBC and thin drivers, the UCP, of course. Uh, web logic has always been there, key component for, for our um, Fusion middleware applications. 12.2, okay. we supported OCI properly and then the ODP net unmanaged drivers. And capacity to do some of this work through SQL Plus. I mean, you, you realistically wouldn't be doing a lot through SQL Plus, but it's good for testing. Okay, so there are options there to use SQL Plus to, to enable you to test um, your setup and that application continuity is configured correctly and everything's working smoothly. Okay, now in 18C, we're not going to talk about it too much because I mean, it's still a future of sorts. Um, but what we're introducing there is what we consider to be transparent application continuity, where we take a slightly more conservative approach to this matching of state, but we basically implement it behind the scenes for you and um, let it run. Now you can configure and change that configuration slightly, but the intent here is to make it as um, transparent to the users and to the DBAs, everybody as much as possible. Okay, so you don't have to do really do any work to get it to run. Uh, it's coming. Okay. Point here is we're gradually evolving things. TAF was a start. It worked almost exclusively at the client. Okay, 
obviously the, the select statements were uh, resubmitted and so forth and replayed. Uh, application continuity enabled us to move that validation, that processing and, and matching down to the client and matching against the database. And as we move further into the future, we're anticipating what we're hoping to do is move everything down to the database level so the DBA can manage everything. It doesn't have to in invoke um, help and assistance from application developers or network administrators or the, uh, those people who are man managing the mid-tier. As long as the mid-tier has a certain level of technology available to support what he wants to do through transparent application, continuity, then it should all be available to manage from the database level itself. Okay. Another level of evolution and uh, transition. Okay. So uh, basically what we're trying to do here is make sure everything's running smoothly, ready to go for application continuity. Okay. Um, it's probably a good Point to stop. Are there any questions in chat that we might want to address at this point before we dig into some of this? Anil, I haven't been look. I can't. I, not so easy to look at chat. Nope. Uh, Carol has been answering them very good. So we are, you know, can continue. Okay. Okay. So initial state before replying. Basically. We've got to configure this, the service properly, okay? The emphasis here is we're only going to be working through services, okay? And so the failover restore has to be configured on the service. We'll talk a bit more about that one and how to do that. Uh, it allowed a report. You know, the common session states can be re restored accordingly, okay? We have to look at logon triggers, labels, TAF. We can use any of these features to restoring the more complex states. Um, in most cases, you're not going to have, have to do that, but we may have to, depending on, on how complex a system you have. As we move forward into 18C, we look at transaction uh, transparent application continuity to enforce those session matches originally uh, before replaying. It's a very conservative approach. You can anticipate that not everything has to match to ensure that your transaction can be replayed. There may be peripheral changes on the signs that may imply changes to the system, but um, so they may not affect your transaction, in which case, you know, there may be some issues if you're trying to do it transparently. Um, again, that, that very transparent uh, automated approach um, has to be careful about that. But if you're just using plain, straightforward application continuity, you can probably get away with some of these things and you have a, a way of judging whether that's the case or not. Okay. But again, if we're trying to automate this with transparently, then uh, we want to be absolutely sure it's going to be, everything's going to be perfect. Okay. Then of course, if it isn't, then you would be alerted and you'd have to have, take some interaction to make it work, fix things. So how to configure the database, service attributes, things that we've been talking about already. You want to be, remember this, we're configuring the service. So these are the specific configuration parameters or attributes for those services. So we set the failover type. Uh, we want it to be automatic, or we can set it for a transaction level, okay? And so forth. Now here's transaction guard. I've just mentioned for the first time here. Transaction guard was introduced um, late in the, in the evolution of TAF and the early days of application continuity to help in terms of alerting to the state of the uh, of the database and the connection, the session. Okay. So um, in early days of TAF, the, uh, because of the transaction or the, the session was unaware of state and whether it's, uh, what, it's what to do, if a session failed, it would not, it would, the application itself would have to 
uh, issue a, uh, an automatic rollback. And uh, the intent here for Transaction Guard was to prevent, you know, to kind of mask some of that. And so that you would not need to issue that rollback statement. Okay. That's basic benefit for it. Okay. It's a protocol and, and you know, information pa mass passing capability for transactions. Okay, so the other things you want to have a look for is basically making set, sure to set up for FAN and so forth. We'll talk a little bit more about that one. For the client side, now this is typically what you're looking at. You can see for Java, what you want to do for Java, set it up. Um, you have to make sure you got a data source that's going to be replayable, okay? Um, either it's local or XA or whichever. Okay. So if you're using JDBC, this is what you'd have to do. Now, if you know OCI, ODB net, OD, ODP.net and so forth, well, it's already enabled on the service, so don't worry about it. Here's how you use it for SQL Plus. Um, you can set it up to as a, with AC switch. Uh, now on top of that, you can use either dynamic or static. Uh, Okay. Options. Again, if you want to look at more details about how these all work, please have a look at some of the documentation. I don't want to really bore everybody with the tears with all the details. The, the point here is, you know, we've extended this capability to SQL Plus for testing purposes. Um, I can't imagine doing it otherwise. Okay. Okay. Now, there are other things, of course, we want to conti configure for continuous availability. And we'll and I'm not going to go into detail on all these. I think this is just more a matter of matter. These are things you should really be considering and get in place first anyway. We go down from, well, on the list is top to bottom, but it's actually from bottom up. Um, the Rack or Rack 1 databases, obviously probably want to use Active Data Guard. This is all supported in this continuous availability and application continuity scenario. Golden Gate's good for, fit in there as well. Flex ASM. Kind of goes with the, with the crowd. Uh, insistence on using services. This provides you that location transparency. You don't the the user connection, whether it's from the mid tier or directly from the from the lap, your desktop. It shouldn't matter. Shouldn't be have to worry about where the database instance is running. Could be running on server one, server two, server three. Who cares? It doesn't. Should not matter. And. Uh, is everything is load balanced behind the scenes? It doesn't need to know. It doesn't even, that client connection doesn't even need to know, the, or the user doesn't even know, need to know where the physical database is. Okay. Again, with scan and um, services, we, we insulate and hide all that, the, the nitty gritty detail of the infrastructure. We want the connections to be a continuous and appear that way. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Fan for immediate interrupts. Okay, so fan, uh, for people who aren't aware of it, fast, fast application notification is that meant to notify applications or users in this case uh, when there's been a failure or something like that. So uh, um, typically if a user connection waits for um, the, the, the timeout, in other words. If there's a user connection that to a, in a database instance and that database instance fails without fan, basically that user session is gonna wait roughly 60 seconds to figure out that I'm not getting any response and will time out and then it'll look for a new, new session right away, okay? If it's possible, TAF helps with that. But if you get fan in there, what is happening here is you get a, what was a fast application um, notification, which will happen you know, al almost immediately to say, well, we've got a failure, do something, you know, you can act now, uh, you can reconnect to somewhere else or do something else. And so uh, it's a faster interrupt for uh, notification for failures. Key for a lot of this. Okay. For in-flight work and making sure it's continuous available, of course, we've talked about application continuity. 
And remember to consider what those SLAs are for recovery and um, repeatability. Um, remember, what we're doing with application continuity here is we basically reconnecting to, the, to a, an, another instance and then replaying the transaction as it, as it stands and from, from a known point within the transaction, much as we've been doing with TAP, but TAP was something for the select and CMOS cursor. In this case, the application continuity situation, we may have a longer running transaction. It may be a single SQL statement, maybe multiples. But in, in essence, we're having to replay um, a part of that at least, and we want to make sure it meets those SLAs because inevitably, depending on how much more you're playing back as part of that um, trans that that transaction, it's going to take a bit of a time more than it was originally going to take. So the user is going to be impacted. It's kind of a, almost impossible to avoid. But in reality, what they're going to get is just an extended hourglass uh, wait time until the res proper response comes back and says transaction completed or here's um, the, the updated set of data. Confirm your um, your flight reservation and off we go. So services, I've, as I've mentioned, this is insulating for um, location transparency. Who knows where these things are? We don't really care. In most cases, um, in this case, we, in the example shown, we have two services. There's one for OLTP and one for batch. Batch own is a, what we consider to be a singleton. It only runs on node one. Uh, the OLTP service is spread across the two instances. Okay, so users' sessions connect accordingly. Typically, um, round robin is the base default option, but you can also have it load balanced. Uh, taking into account CPU and, and resource availability on the um, two instances. Again, users shouldn't care. They should be insulated completely from this. But it's the key to making sure everything work. Okay. Okay, here's your sequence. This is how we make these connections up here continuous. Um, here's your connect string. Okay, with the connection timeout is set to 90, or I mentioned the 60 before. You can retry for 20 times with the retry delays between for three. In other words, if you have a failure, you try to reconnect to a, another service and so forth. That database instance may be busy for its recovery purposes or whatever, but we want to keep trying every 20 seconds or we're going to, every three seconds until we can finally connect. Okay. It'll keep trying 20 times over. Now, if you don't set the retry count, well, it'll keep trying forever. And that may, may not be optimal. Okay. We will put load balancing is turned on so that we just automatically balance um, connections. Okay. And then we want to use the service name. You see the gold cloud. Make sure that service name is not the default, the one that is deep by default created for the database or PDB, okay? That's for administration purposes only. You wanna create your own service. In this case, it's called Gold Cloud, okay? FAN, we've already mentioned. Um, basically, it's, we, everywhere uses it, ONS, and we use FAN, okay? As a, the subtitle points out, the dead thing cannot tell you it's dead. Okay, so basically you're re relying on a, one another or the data, other database instances to, or and clusters nodes to tell you this. Okay. So we use ONS here or here to get the, the information to you. Okay. So what I like to do here, I don't want to I've gone through slides more than I really wanted to. I'd like to go back here and inquire of of you on 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 the on the session what whether you are aware of TAF and if you used it in the past and what you're doing today or planning to do for. Um, 
continuous availability, especially for applications. So Ian, before the start of the session, when I advertised these, mm -hmm. um, there were a couple of questions that came through. Okay. Um, so um, one question actually was more of a comment that uh, just reading verbatim, trying to not uh, basically saying uh, most of the examples are in Java. Um, is there more examples in Python, Node.js, and other languages? Um, so you want to say something about that? Using Python? Oh, I see. Okay. Um, I don't. It's hard to take it out. I mean, what context that means? Um, are we running writing applications with Python that much, or is it more Java? Right. So the, I think the question is asking, like most of the examples of how to use um, um, TAF or app continuity is uh, with the Java. And they were asking yes. if there are examples of Python and other languages like Node.js and all that. Um, I guess we could publish some examples in other languages, you know, like Python and so forth. Uh, we concentrate a lot on the Java ones because um, the prevalence of Java, you might say, especially in the mid-tier. Um, and yeah, um, I hadn't thought of that. I just throw up examples of what we're doing and what customers have seen done. And it never really seems to come back to Java. So um, yeah, I, it's a good point. I mean, maybe we'll have to make a point of that in the future of making sure we have a bit more uh, broader spectrum of examples, uh, you might say. Um, notice, you know, we, we as long as those other libraries are, uh, and drivers are being referenced, you know, and used by the Python, there's no, uh, maybe that's another question, is can, can it, and how would you do that? So it's almost like a developer session, how, how to incorporate um, these drivers in Python and so on and so forth, uh, other alternatives. Notice we can do a lot of this stuff in the pro languages, but I don't suspect that that's being used as often anymore. Uh, pro C and so forth. I think those right. Are, right. Okay. Right. So I think that's a good point. And in the future, we'll see what we can do to um, provide some examples in other in languages or applications other than Java. Right. Um, one more additional question that came in is um, when they have a a customer has three nodes, and if he has, a, you know, one of the nodes um, has any issues, regardless of evictions or whatever, uh, can he choose to fail over to a certain node um, using app continuity? Well, it's a matter of more a matter of where the service fails over, isn't it? Um, so regardless of how many nodes you have, you still have what you consider to be preferred and available nodes for a service. Um, I think I have an example of some of that here. So let me find the right slide. Yeah, even on here, where I'm defining the service on the bottom, the minus R is the, the preferred node. Okay, and that, that list, it's actually a list. It could have multiple servers in that list of which are preferred. And by default, the... Um, the service will always start on one of those services servers if those servers are available. If they are not, it will one of, that service will fail over second best to the available node. Okay, so the minus a in this case. I've only put a, a single node in each case, but that's how it works. So it's it's, it's not so much how application continuity is going to behave; it's more a matter of where the service is going to lie or be supported. So by default, in this case, we've um, the primary uh, preferred node will be the marketing one server. If it's not available, the service will start on the marketing two server. So if you see the failure on marketing one, uh, for the instance, then the service will switch over and run on marketing two. Okay. So this applies here. If you look down at this other case we had further down, uh, where we had multiple services configured. Here, um, in this case, uh, the batch service 
its preferred node is node one. It's always gonna run there unless it's not available, in which case it'll fail over to its, if it's listed, uh, uh, available nodes. Now you can create services without, so that it will always only run on a particular node, in which case, you know, and I can see that happening for certain circumstances. Um, for especially for non-critical applications, potentially reporting or whatever, because we've got, mm, for whatever reasons, all sorts of possibilities. In the OLTP service, in this case, I would sus suspect that both nodes are, are preferred, okay? and in which case, it'll run on either or both. Okay. So that's basically how it, whether you've got three nodes, that's good. Now the, the issue might be, and we've seen this with some customers, where they say, well, this particular service has failed, and uh, but it could run on any other node, but I know I've got extra resources available on this other node. I have a node in this cluster that's specified as only available for failover, okay? That's all it does. Now, it's diff more difficult to configure that. And uh, so, obviously the solution there is policy managed, but uh, we don't wanna go into that one. Okay. So there are other complicated scenarios where this preferred and available configuration approach does not always meet the, the requirements, but in most cases it does. So in a three node cluster, you lose one node, you want us to specify which node it goes to. Um, you may, you could not, you probably step one up as a, an available node and the preferred node is where it had been running and you should be good that way. Okay. Cool, thanks, Ray. Okay, uh, now. Scenarios. Are you to the done to the session, uh, Ian? So I think we're getting close to the end, unless we've got some okay. further questions. We've, I've got a lot more people on here than I thought we would. Okay. And I'm very happy for that. <laughs> right. right. Well, I recognize some of these as being internal people, but it doesn't matter. I, I'm pleased that we've got some more. Um, what I'd like to do in a future session, though, is to dig down into application continuity in more detail explain what session states mean, what these other other factors are uh, and that contribute to making um, application continuity work so well, the current capabilities and so forth, as we pointed out here, what request boundaries are, um, what these side effects and so forth are, what what impacts the, the recoverability uh, and replayability of transactions and sessions that are managed but through application continuity. Um, so we can look at those in more detail. We don't want to dwell too much on which drivers and so forth. We just want to talk about what are the complications and how we address those and what these all mean, okay? And how you can test and be sure that your app, your app can be managed and covered for availability through application continuity. We have utility for that as well. Right, right. And I, I would really encourage everybody, if you have any specific questions or topics that cannot be answered in the, in the scope of a question, uh, like you need more details about a specific um, uh, topic, do let us know so we can plan our sessions around that topic so you can get that information. And, you know, the, I guess, uh, Ian, you have ways um, to reach out to you. Um, and uh, and uh, I guess, yeah, uh, you know, you guys can reach out to me. Yeah, I think it be, would be best if we all just reach out through the Ask Tom uh, web page for, for RAC um, that is under Anil's name. Um, right. There's a facility, you know, there's a, there's a, a, session, there's a, uh, a window there in which you can submit questions. And I would strongly recommend doing so. Um, this way we can address specific needs. We'd also like to know what's missing. You know, it's, it's important for us to, to understand what, Type of questions you have, and either we're not covering that 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 those questions or topics uh, sufficiently as we do presentations like this, or in the documentation, or maybe some functionality we're missing. We would really like to hear. So um, right, please let us know. 